All right, so welcome back, guys. This is going to be game number three, the final decider for the lower bracket side of things between Malaysia and Alliance. I'm Egad. Joining me here is going to be Ryan Noob, and uh, yeah, that was hell of a game from Alliance. And we see the SF band this time. All right. Hooray, we get to see some Mushi playing something else. Uh, maybe Queen of Pain <laughs> from uh, Malaysia don't ban it. <laughs> I think PyCat, though, is very happy to just get that first pick for him just about every game. Yep. So. It's way too strong of a hero right now, uh, especially in the pro scene. Like, uh, it's always first pick, first ban. And, and profit. Same two bans every time. Yeah, just respecting Bulldog. Uh, let's see the Clockwork ban. We'll see Alliance pick up uh, Rubik or Chen again. Oh. But the Undying slipped through with the less rack. Okay, now we're seeing a little bit variation of the pick, so this is good. <laughs> yeah. I really think that the Undying should have stayed banned. I feel like it's too niche of a hero, Ooh. and they picked up the Jow Ranger. We should see a Visage ban with this. It, yeah. A Visage Ventral ban wouldn't be too bad here, but uh, we'll see what Malaysia want to do because Drow being picked up immediately just comes to the picture and it's like, all right, what are the ranged heroes they want to pair with this that are going to be amazing for pushing? And I think Alliance's strat now is going to be coming, uh, or they just respect Bulldog and Big Clockwork again, but their strat's going to be come down to don't lose by 30 minutes. That's that's what they're going to try to do. Yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing a Malaysia since they have the first pick coming out of the bands. Uh, they don't ban Visage here, and then they pick up Visage. Radiant I feel like that'd be bands. really cool to see instead of just instant banning every time Jero comes up. All right, let's see Malaysia. What do you got? Where's the Visage ban? I'm sure Alliance are gonna want to play it. I mean, Draw Visage is probably the staple yep. for that whole combination. Yeah, they're definitely not expecting to get Visage here, but they're happy if it gets pick, if it gets lit through. Five seconds remaining. So yeah. Hmm. Shadow Demon banned out and Rubik both good uh, supports with the Lishrak. Great pans. Uh, without one of these stuns for Lishrak, it makes it really hard. He has to position himself really well in order to get the stuns off. Um, but again, the, I'm going to come back to the Undying here. I feel like it's going to be really strong in this game. Although the Tombstone is going to be uh, melted by the Drill Aura, mm -hmm. I still feel like it's going to be like something that's going to be a problem, especially in lane. We're going to figure out what these lanes are. Maybe like a dual lane, dual okay. off lane. All right, so they ban it. And they pick the CM. All right, getting a little frosty in here. So the mana, the Aura is going to be amazing for the Lesh, as well as the Undying too. That means just more spam out in the lane from the Decays. Yeah. So, all right, not bad. Can just resort to the jungle as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Alliance went for maybe some aggressive sentries and try to block out some of the camps, but we'll come to that point when we get into the game. And Alliance, what other range can they throw in here? Phoenix for Bulldogs, he'd be working just fine and get some extra right-click damage on him. Not, not bad, if they wanted to. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't, even though Kachik Kachi has been running the Lishrak every time, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a one-roll. Uh, for who is it? Reserve time. K Y X Y. Uh, I feel like they need to pair the Undying with something, something that can help them. Spirit Breaker. Offense. Yeah, Spirit Breaker would be actually huge this game. Does Gus stop uh, charge? It'll yeah, it'll, it'll silence him mid charge. It'll, all right. And push him back. All right. I always wondered how that interaction worked. I've never seen it, even though it's something that you should see every once in a while. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like a CM Lashrak lane can just dominate uh, in the safe lane versus whatever offlane Alliance throws out. Uh, and they can just like do really well in a dual offlane with Undying. This could be a game where you actually take a few extra points in the uh, aura before the Nova, and you just get Lightning Storm spam, you get the K spam, what else can they get out for more uh, spam? In the mid lane, Mushi, ah, uh, jeez. You can't get the Queen of Pain, which is really sad, but uh, could, could snag the DK. DK here with the Shadow Blade early could just destroy what Alliance are trying to do. So, I haven't seen much of Mushi besides his SF, though. Storm Spirit still on the deck, though, and Alliance go for the AA. Right, so, this is still pretty scary of a tri lane. If they do a tri versus, again, a dual off lane with him dying, uh, they don't have any lockdown. They have the Frost Arrow slow as well as maybe a silence, but you don't wanna, you're don't you not going to rely on those that early. So, I feel like he's going to have basically like a free lane to just run around and run at the supports. Maybe even get a kill on the carry if, he, if Loda oversteps his bounds. All right. Ten seconds remaining. Malaysia, what's your plan? What's what's Mushi doing? I haven't seen him play SF. I'm not gonna see him play SF this game. I'm so I'm so surprised. I'm shocked. I'm in awe. Um. So what else is there? There's storm. There's not much to stop him besides the gust. Um. I feel like it's still too early to pick up a storm versus like there's so much damage on the alliance side that if they pick up one stun, 
Like, just like, I mean, pick up a silencer. Be, yeah. <laughs> oh. But yeah, if they, if they pick up a stun, I feel like he'll just melt, so maybe not him. Lion's still in the pool, too, and PL comes out from Malaysia, so that'll be KOXY, and that's definitely a solid pick against the Phantom Lancer. You just Phantom Rush in, and you're you're going to chase everybody down. Drow has no way to get away with besides Gust, and then you just doppelganger it, and you're good to go. So maybe it's a dual offlane with... I'm stuck on this dual offlane, because I think Undying League really benefits from it. So maybe a dual off Undying with Shrek, and then safe lane PLCM. They've got so many options with the these pickups. They could even run a coreless Shrek, and it has a support Undying. So there's so much versatility opposed to the Alliance draft. Yeah, and there's already low HP heroes on the Alliance side too, so Decay stack's gonna suck in the early part of this game. Uh, last pick for the Alliance side, we already know that Lodo's gonna be playing the Drow, Queen of Pain for Piecat, need a Bulldog and a fucking Mad, unless fucking Mad plays the AA, I mean, lead Akeish Chen. I mean, Akeish Chen could still fit in this anyway. But the Undying kind of has a good time with it because he drops a tombstone. The zombies make some nice work of the uh, Chen creeps. Yeah, and there's so many zombies. Yeah, so much for the uh, Soul Rip to benefit off of Ooh. Weaver. That's, I haven't seen you in a while. That's a offlane Weaver. Maybe. I, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's an offlane Quap, a mid throw, and then a safe lane Weaver. Uh, it's really good versus the Undying, as well as the Drawer, you're gonna melt the Tombstone, as well as the, uh, the, t the zombies just disappear when you go invis. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a high commitment kind of, kind of thing from Alliance. They really need to push it in this game early, because the PL can overrun them very easily. There's not much clear right now besides, like, the early game of the wave and the, uh, scream, so... These, these PL illusions past 30 minutes could become quite troublesome for Alliance. And the Sand King ban, okay. So a little worried about the blink and the burrow strikes and the doo doo doos. <laughs> and Broodmother, okay, smart Wait. ban. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was like, Broodmother, they have three quarries, but no. Now, this is Malaysia, what we're looking at. It could work, but the Broodmother with the Undying, I mean, that's just a whole next level lane, but uh, yeah, not gonna happen here. And yeah. what else do they need? What else so do they that, want? So that means. Alliance is thinking that it's a support CM Undying, a mid Lushrak, and a safe lane PL. I wonder if that's the case. I guess it could be an aggro try with PL. I, I don't know. They can Jungle Undying, safe lane CM. So, what do you know? It, it, it is. It's it's a core role. Oh, no, it could be. Yeah, and it could be a. Wait till we see um, who picks what. We'll, we'll, we'll speculate yeah, from we'll, there. We'll wait. All right. No more theory crafting on that. We'll sit there. I feel like it'll be the mid Lush, though, and then off lane yeah. Beast, and safe lane PL. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, Beastmaster here is really nice, too. If you can get a Blink and some early Roars out onto uh, Drow, it's going to be some easy kills. Uh, you have a lot of good ways of chasing down everybody in Alliance right now, besides the Blink and the Shikuchi that can get out, but Lightning Storm Slow, Tombstones, and everything else to follow up. And Alliance's last pick, what do we got? Need another support for fucking matter, Ake. Need another range, a Lion. Nope, Disruptor. Okay. Interesting. So, Alliance have zero stuns right now, which is kind of a threat. If Kofi have... proc that counts, I guess. <laughs> they do have the Disruptor, which is the wall, and the kinetic, uh, the kinetic field and the Static Storm, which is basically a stun, but they, yeah, it's I'm, I'm scared for their ability to catch the PL. Glimpse, if they can find the real one. Uh, hmm. This is this is weird. I I need to see how these lanes play out first before I can kind of tell anything. But all right, so Kachikimba on the CM. That means it is going to be a Mushi Lishrak. So mid, mid Lishrak, mid roll Lishrak. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Let me see how he plays it. I mean, he'll need to get the early bottle uh, to spam with the lightning storms to deal with the mid Pycat uh, Queen of Pain. If not, he's going to get right click pretty hard because. I expect Loda to do the, the triple the triple Wraith Band kind of builds. And let me change my overlay real quick. Almost forgot. Boop. There we go. We're back in. So this is going to be the final game in the loser's bracket here between Malaysia and Alliance. Loser of this is knocked out of the tournament. So a lot on the line. A lot of money to play for. And Ryan is obviously excited. And I'm excited. So let's do the game introductions. Three. Game 3 game hype. Three, so much hype. All right. So... It is an offlane Beastmaster, and the Undying isn't going up there with them. Uh, I feel like Undying really suffers if he doesn't, like, I guess they might just be clearing out their jungle. Admiral Bulldog wasting all of his mana to get down there and uh, plant that early Observer Warden. They've been planning that every game. I don't know if it's been getting dewarded. No, it hasn't. 
So it's the same for both sides, actually. They they yeah. both drop a uh, respective, just kind of super safe lane ward, make sure they don't get rotated on. And do we see random random sentries come out? Maybe no. Okay, no no scouting out from either side. But let's do the players. K Y X Y is gonna be playing your P L. We got Kachek Imba playing the C M. Not rocking the Arcana though, sadly. And then Johnny on the Undying Mushi playing himself the mid lesh. I'm excited to see how that goes. And then Ohio on the Beastmaster up top. Top we got Loda on the Dro Ranger. We have Ake on the Disruptor, Pycat on the Quap for the third game in a row, Bucking Mad on the AA, and over down here we have Bulldog in the off lane Weaver. Okay. And it seems they're rotating the lanes actually. They might have been looking to go for this aggressive try, and they're gonna scout it out that Bulldog is going bot and fight for this rune. Bulldog, Bulldog actually can't do anything about it. Can he get it? Oh no. And that's gonna be Malaysia picking up both runes this time. And actually up top, the fight, it's there. First blood comes in for Loda. The right click so much. Ake ends up going down. They drop a spirit lance on a fucking mad, and he should be dropping next to decay damage out there. Can't wait XY getting a clarity potion too to try to chase it, but a nice cancel from Pycat. That's the way to do it, and Johnny can't go for a decay kill and it's gonna be a one-for-one one trade with Loda getting first blood to start this game yeah Johnny only getting a two-man decay out of the four here four there but it was a one-for-one one trade but Malaysia come out way on top of the double bounty room pickup uh, who got the first blood I think Loda it was did. Alliance. yeah, yeah. Them. so that's something going their way oh mid lane already just getting a lot of mass harass up down to the pie cat Already eaten one of his pool tangles, and they both actually went interesting enough for for null tallies. So they have a lot of a lot of right click they can exchange. Oh, that's cool. Maybe she's faking his lightning storm, and Pycat doesn't want to take any extra damage, so he's faking it and then uh, just auto attacking for the last CS. It's she a lot of mind games in the mid lane. A lot of mind games to be had between these teams, and even Pycat forced to uh, purchase some early tangos to help him out in this lane. And then just the fights in the jungle, man. Look at this. Johnny looking to dive. If he was level 2, that'd be fucking mad. Just dead. Just chase him down, and now he's eating a little bit of a thunderbolt. So he's got to get the hell out of there. He keeps getting double DK stacks on the two supports, and their HP pulls are very low to begin with. So that's that's kind of scary. Yeah, it's, seeing how easy it is to get these double DK stack, uh, double DKs on the, the supports, like, once he gets level 2, if that keeps happening, they're just going to... They're just gonna die over and over again. Look at that. Frost yeah. arrow and right click from all the supports. Jeez. That's gonna be another salve used in that lane in KYXY, man. Even with the armor of the early Bazzi. Doesn't matter. Such a low health pool. So there are five ranged heroes in Alliance uh, using the draw to max effect. There's Everyone's getting six bonus damage. Pycat is gonna use that to, to deny a lot more in the mid lane. He's doing pretty well in the mid lane. They're both doing well. What do we got? KOXY again taking a lot of damage. He hides in the trees. Jeez. He can't even lane, it seems. Whenever Loda gets one of those frost or uh, those frost arrows out, they give him the chilling touch and that damage just really stacks up so quick. Yep, so. They just they really need to be patient. Uh, Undying does now have his tombstone, so they're gonna be able to easily win a fight if uh, he gets one or two zombies on the supports, but I don't know if that's gonna ever happen now. Like they've wasted so much region that uh, KOX is really not ever gonna be full HP. They really they only have one tango left. They have to send a lot more region out here. They could go for some kind of all in play once the wave is in their favor, but yeah. When when they're getting pushed in like this they have no control on this, so they have to sit back, sit back and wait. Play comp cool and collected and I mean Mushi in this mid lane is actually outlast hitting Pycat and keeping the pressure mounted so heavily. Yeah, this, this is all starting from the early fights. Pycat not having enough regen. He sent himself out four more tangos, and he still he ran out before his bottle came out. And, like he's sitting at half HP, so he can't really like freely last it like he wants to with the drawer. I gotta say, Mushi's mana management has been on point. Like his bottle charge usage and the fact that he's been able to just get the occasional lightning storm hit onto Pycat. So good, so well played. Yeah, he's just scaring Pycat so much. And how about the off laners? What do we got? Ohio, level 5, Bulldog level 5, actually almost level 6, so they're getting closer and closer to just kind of being, you know, the rat potential. And actually, the boar gets killed off pretty easily with the Shikuchi as Bulldog just chases it down into a Sentry Ward. So Ohio actually did D Ward him, and now the right click's oh. coming in. The boar doing quite a lot, and the axe is coming in. Do we have a blind throw? It's level 1. Bulldog going down in towards the side shop, and he's actually going to TP back home. Well, he really wanted to trade with Ohio right there and then get the rune. And he would have, he'd have actually controlled the lane so much off of that, but because Ohio is running out of mana, but or running out of region, but 
it's not what ended up happening. He doesn't go for the rune and losing a lot in this bottom lane. And speaking of losing a lot, all top three last hitters are going to be on the Malaysia side. So they're they're definitely putting their work in right now. Oh, wow. I and thought Jorowitz doing a lot better than that. They forced him actually into the jungle a little bit, it, it seems. And uh, he's, he's going to be farming up a very easy <laughs> medium stack. Yeah, they're just so so afraid of this, like, try lane. The Jorow can't see us anymore. Yeah, forced to the jungle. They're giving a lot of... It's going to be a lot of experience for the AA, though. So that could be something. Ake picking up a Null Talisman first, not going for Boots, just going for, I guess, early stats item. Early right clicks, man. And now, yeah. potentially, the dive is going to come out here onto the uh, Ancient Apparition. If fucking Matt shows himself, he's going to drop very quickly, but the support's actually out of position. But uh, they're pulling the wave. They're going to try to get the maximum out of this that they can. I thought they were going to try and pull... Oh, TP's coming out. Yeah, from both sides, it seems. But there's this high ground ward. Uh-oh. For a solo kill from Ohio on bottom lane, he just uh, Bulldog tried to time lapse, just time his uh, time it perfectly, but Ohio just roars him right as he's uh, mid cast animation, and that's a solo kill going the way of Ohio. Just barely caught the end of that, but well played. That's the one for that's the one on one matchup, man. The boar just wins the matchup by itself. So Ohio just getting some severe right clicks in. Ake couldn't do anything in time, and now a dive. Ohio. Just gonna go ham onto Ake right now. There's no glimpse to keep him safe, and he doesn't even know, use it. Time lapses. Did he buy back and time lapse in? No, 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 he just he just time lapsed. Oh, okay. Well, so, that's gonna be a death. Ohio should be, be going a, down. Yeah, that's gonna be an okay trade for Alliance. Ohio, like both teams are okay with that. Like, it's a small trade. Yeah, the offlaner goes down, but there's like so much work is being put in by this uh, by Ohio right now. Hmm. Okay. Wait, he had a respawn within five seconds then to come in with that time lapse. That's weird. Well, no, it's it's from your death. Oh, from the death. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's it doesn't right. it doesn't keep. Counting. I forgot. <laughs> I was like looking at the ability. I was like, wait a minute, that wasn't five seconds. That was more than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So tier one up top, getting pressured. Kyx was still all alone up here, and Kachik Imba trying to put some pressure on the mid, but Podcast playing way too safe. And he's getting some support though from Ake. The, the supports from Alliance right now are. I would say struggling a little bit, but at least fucking Mad's getting some solo XP while Loda's yeah. off. I don't know where he's. He's actually going down towards the uh, bot lane. Yeah, that's really important. Like Johnny on the Undying really wants to be fighting early, and he want that like that's how that's how Undyings get their farm and their uh, experience. And not getting farm and experience right now is really really uh -oh. tough. Mushi is like, getting chased down by this haste rune. He's slowed up a little bit. Pycat can't go for the dive. Cool. Oh, they were trying to glimpse him. Just yeah. out of range. He didn't. That, he didn't go boots. He went no talisman, and because of that, he didn't get the glimpse off. Such minor things that can affect getting a kill. It's pretty sad, but oh, down bot, little gust, a little bit of a split skirmish there. Rover's actually used. Ohio doesn't have it up anymore. Yeah, must have been a roar under a weaver, and then he time lapsed, and along with a TB down bottom from Joe Ranger. So I'm not. I'm not sure what the idea is behind this, but Lowe's gonna at least get some farm. He's not too in risk of dying, so they should be okay there. And then coming forward, Mushi getting glimpsed back. He's going to get Sonic waved and almost gets the kill onto Ake. Zeus ult, quick. <laughs> Just... All right, the stats, Goodbye, stats ended up working right there. The Null Talisman probably ended up saving him. Whoa, we were getting a kill. Yep, Just chases onto the CM. Easy peasy as that. And... Uh, <laughs> Fucking Mad's just been hugging the trees, man. He he can't go into this lane, but he's just gonna get the XP. He's all about Ice Blast right now. Just, just waiting for it, not doing anything. Uh, I wonder if the PL's been denying. He has 11 denies, so... Uh, not that much. I, I guess he doesn't know that Buggy Mad is there, and I, if he did, he would be denying a lot more, and Buggy Mad would be a lot lower level, but just not focusing on that. Well, Buggy Mad can TP out if anything, too, but he's been getting harassed by Spirit Lances, it seems. He took, like, one or two there, but... Yeah, this tier one's gonna go down very quickly. It's at 162 health, and KYX we can push it down soon. Uh, how about any smokes? Like, there's not really any smoke potential coming in from either side. There's Ake with one in his inventory, but I mean, he he's not gonna be able to do much up oh, top. Here with that. it is, top. Ohio buys himself a smoke, goes top lane. He's almost he's on his way for a necro, but almost has it at eight minutes. And yeah, gonna gank the top lane. Fucking they're, exp yeah, they're expecting a fight here. That's the long ass TP. <laughs> And uh, what do we got? 
Bulldog's gonna look to go in. KOX is gonna get tracked up a little bit with that bolt. And now, Ice Blast, looking for a little bit of revenge. Can it connect? Yes, it does! And he's gonna try to doppelganger away, and he's gonna get glimpsed right back into this fight, and he goes down, and Bulldog on a killing spree. So yeah, Alliance or MacGyver and kills, like, they're just like finding these small, small kills, like, uh, with, with like two or three heroes, and it's, it's benefiting them a little bit, even though they're pretty far behind on CS, like, into CS charts. Like, they're not falling that far behind. And not looking for Pycat. Malaysia are trying to do something here. Looking to get some more towers. They pop the Diabolic Edict and they're just going to push into this. But there's supportive TPs coming through. They do get spotted out by Kachikimba, but they decide to blink away. Ice Blast. This could be huge. Connects onto Ohio. It does not hit Mushi, but they're both silenced. So they're going to clip back, man. Ake playing this one so well. Drops his roar, though, before he dies. Ohio's going to be able to make it a one for one. Mushi getting a double kill, actually making it a two for one. And the tower is his last hit, so net worth wise, he just spiked on up and at 4,500, huge fight for them. Ooh. So yeah, here comes the, here comes the undying, his first impact of the entire game. Besides being like a scary, scary undying, uh, and he actually assists two kills, and you just can't fight into tombstone right now. Like you just have to like keep running away from it, but you can't really run away because you need towers. Oh, bottom. Nice one. Oh. oh, he could have he could have ulted there and gotten the kill, but he just. I guess he doesn't want to put it on cooldown because uh, it's pretty long. Malaysia, <laughs> yeah, Malaysia are going to be pushing towers, and he needs it for towers, like tower defenses. And at this point, Alliance, they're getting pushed in a little harder than I thought they would be. I thought they'd be trying to push in, but seeing as to how Loda got really, really shut down in his lane, he went Morbid Mask, and now is just farming up the jungle forever. As long as he can just keep giving them the aura, I mean, consistently, that's good. And he didn't go for triple Wraith Bane either. He just went one Wraith Bane. That's it. Interesting. Yeah, once the mask command is quickly, not really focusing on the aura, focusing on himself, which isn't the worst. Uh, AA though, getting the quick six has been really helpful. Bulldog just... chasing Mushi, he's gonna get the solo kill. It seems. Yeah. No. Wow. With the haste rune, nice. <laughs> that's that. That's a pretty big kill. But yeah, like I was saying, like AA getting a quick six has just been stopping these pushes pretty much single-handedly. Like I feel like a lot more towers would be down if he didn't get that quick six. And, uh, anything else on the current? Any big items coming in here? What do we got? How much gold does Bulldog actually have right now? He's going for Ogre Club. Maybe straight BKB? Would it be too bad here? Hmm, actually, no. BKB would be the best item. Bulldog? I... Hmm. What item could be good? Ice Blast. He's getting ticked down a little bit there by the, uh, little bug that's chasing him out. They kill it off, but he gets chased in. KOXY, dead to Pykan, who now's on a killing spree. Uh, it... Maybe he's going Ags? <laughs> I mean, doesn't... I <laughs> Time lapse like your teammates, alright. Uh, it's really good versus the Lishrak and the uh, Beastmaster. Maybe it's... Maybe it could be the thing? First I Ags, competitive Dota at I-League land? Why not? <laughs> I mean, I would... I would guess that'd be better than a BKB because there's just there's so much like like the roar is just gonna destroy him in these because he's bottom. Ice Blast needs to hit. It only hits Ohio. They get a Static Storm in onto Mushi. He's trying to get out of this right now. He's gonna be able to run. Admiral Bulldog gonna get roared. He's got the time lapse. Can he make it out? No, the CC chain is perfect. Oh, so Bulldog dies in his TP with the tower. But Pycat going forward gets the Sonic Wave and the scream. The damage is there, but he's gonna end up dropping for this. Johnny gets the last hit and that is not worth it for the side of alliance yeah bulldog just going down really really fast uh so yeah i guess it's gonna be a bkb for the weaver but i don't think that's really what he needs like i, I don't know why he would just choose not to get a link in this game maybe it's too much of a build up oh, nice little three-man ice blast coming in maybe gonna look to defend this Aki has glimpse can't spot anybody out though and that last fight actually was a huge exchange for malaysia they got a thousand gold and 2400 xp so decent amount of change for them so yeah I, I don't know how the new gold works uh, because the more heroes there are the more gold is uh, given to the team so Mushi just going in there and getting uh, so even though he trades one for one and gets a solo kill and like solo experience he's throwing away a lot more gold to the other team because of the way the new gold patch patch works they're trying to get Mushi he's being so aggressive and just pushing up this top lane but uh, he backed off very smart, and they even dropped an Ice Blast to just scout him out. And uh, I gotta say, I gotta give props to fucking Matt, he's been hitting some pretty clutch Ice Blasts, but there's just not much follow-up, unfortunately. Because when he hits them, everybody's already dead.
So Necro two out for Ohio. Necro three going to be coming in soon. And once you have the Necro, actually, that's pretty dangerous. Yeah, once he gets Necro, every like anybody he roars is just going to die. Like I really like this uh, this build, like this draft from Malaysia. They have the Beastmaster roar followed up by the Moshi stun, uh, the Split Earth, and anyone's just going to die. That's like six seconds of CC. Yeah, about five actually. Let's see, yeah, Bulldog just, doing Ancients? Simple. Maybe? They see them getting pulled. Ohio looking for a roar. Whoa, Whoa. He, he hit that with the dust! Oh my, Bulldog! Maybe gonna go down. He time lapses back in. He's got the static store from his teammate. He's in the Shikuchi. And Ohio taking a lot of damage. The Ice Blast is there. Secondary does pop. Mushi's running away with his haste rune. KOX may looking to join the fight. And they drop Ohio. And still in a pretty tough predicament from the Blade's side. But they're gonna go to push. KOXY has been untouched, he's almost got his drums, and with the Sakila they get the aura, and actually Ohio got a kill with the boar it seems, and the Necro units onto uh, Ake, with the tombstone, wow. Yeah, they're just pushing down towers so fast, there's oh, one pause. tower for Alliance and four for Malaysia, so this pushing draft is going really well, as well as the fallback of PL. Kale. Kale. <laughs> it's a little bit of lag coming in here, so, happened a bit yesterday. So yeah, that, that fight was really cool. Like, I don't know if you saw, but I didn't see a I didn't see a Beastmaster Hawk going in, and it flew in from the right side. Like, he actually had one like planted over here for a long time. So their their dust broke or their smoke broke, and the the Hawk just barely saw the Weaver, and he ended up getting the roar because of it. Jeez, perfect timing too. Yeah. For that, so a little bit of DC. Wait for the lag to fix up there at the LAN, and I'm gonna turn the Chinese stream on just to just to make sure we can keep tabs on what's happening here yeah all the players are just sitting in the booth and waiting <laughs> so nice oh, he's actually got some water too nice they're, they're catering everybody <laughs> at least it's not like yesterday where the players got out of the booth i mean that was that was a whole that's, different story yeah that's that's always scary as a caster you're just like uh, -uh. all right <laughs> throw some music throw some tunes and the crowd actually filled up a little bit which is pretty nice actually you know i'm gonna throw up in the stream we don't we don't have much to see here right now so here you guys can look at the crowd with us. Gander, look at that nice little pander not pandering view, but a scenic view? No. What's it called? It's a jib. There we go. The jib view. It's a fun, interesting camera. Yeah, you can see Bulldog, you can see Ake, there's fucking Matt in the middle. Uh Lodo down at the ends. And then uh That's that's Pycat. Oh man, they're both blonde they're both blondish, I guess. I can't I can't determine faces yet. I'm still very bad at that. I'm bad with names and I'm bad with faces, so I don't. I don't really remember anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this pause is gonna seemingly take a little bit, so we'll put we'll put a little bit of music on until this game resumes. Hopefully, it'll be uh, in a minute. Maybe. Are they ready? Uh, eh? No, no. Beastmaster's still disconnected. Yeah. How's your day going, man? What are you What have you been up to? Are you playing some Halo? Yeah, playing some Halo. I woke up at like five, six ish p.m. It's the uh, the gamer grind, just uh, sleeping through the day. Uh, so yeah, this is this is basically my afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Casting some Dota, having some fun. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So oh, he's dude. reconnected. You're ready? Cool. I unpause this music. Boop. And pause the stream. So good. We're back. Back in. Back in the mix. And uh, it was after a very nice uh, two-for-one trade for the Malaysia side. And somehow Bulldog's still staying on the top of the net worth despite his uh, very untimely two deaths. But he's got five kills, so that's <laughs> really counteracting that. Yeah, that must be why. Like, he doesn't have that much CS. 70 at 15 minutes isn't, isn't the best. Uh, yeah, not even one of the top. Stun off the mark. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to blind stun <laughs> Shikuchi to uh, uh, Weaver. Well... Let's ice let's keep blast. an eye on the timing too for the ice blast ags. Like uh, it seems fucking mad, so not gonna go for Midas or anything like that. Just straight uh, ags for him. So sub thirty minutes is where you're looking for like the pristine kind of pickup with a couple of assists, which he actually has five of. So he's got half the team's assists, which is nice. Yeah, really impressive, uh, especially with the early the CM plus the undying. That just that's like a, a, a slayer right there. But uh, he actually has zero deaths, so. Props to him. Like I always find it hard staying alive as a as an AA, but he attack. makes it easy. All right, and Bulldog. He's got you know 2,100 more golds. 
maybe maybe we'll get to see the Ags. I would I would be absolutely Radiant laughing hilariously when attack. they run in and he he just time lapses somebody else and like wait what the hell? Yeah. I mean, theory-wise, I feel like it'd be great, but I feel like I don't think they they've tested it enough. I think I mean no one's tested that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like Bullock could just like stay back in the fight, and anybody that gets Rorty just time lapses, and it would be so much better than a BKB. Like, of course, there's stuff that you can like, you, you can go in and do your own thing, but I feel like you're just gonna die to a roar anyway. I don't know. It's it's just so many funny Agus effects that were added. I think like the the Legion Commander duel is probably the, the stupidest ones. <laughs> Where have you ever? I know people have complained that I want longer duels. I can't get the damage, <laughs> but that's a little overkill. Maybe you could like duel two people at once or something. Have your buddy join in. You could like tag someone in. Be like WWE or something, <laughs> like wrestling. Oh my God! It's ancient apparition out of nowhere. Just trading up for the duel spot, but all right, that's just my idea. So yeah, Weaver's. He actually just took his second point in Gemini. He put a lot of points in his stats to try to stay alive. So I guess I guess with a BKB and going stats, he could stay alive in a fight to, uh, long enough to get his time lapse off. But he needs to activate the BKO oh, bottom. Maybe gonna see it. He's gonna turn around for a Spirit Lance. Okay. And there's the glimpse. So what do we got? Static Storm? No. Oh. He doppelgangered it. Wow. That's the first time I'm actually getting to see that. Yeah. It's not too I, often. I always assume that you just go back to the point. But if you, I guess if you time it perfectly mid, roar. Oh, we got a roar coming in. We're gonna see Loda getting caught out here, and I bet you they wish they had the <laughs> Weaver eggs now, but. Loda's gonna go down, and that's gonna transfer into a push. Should be a trade for the bottom tier one though with the co-op. Co-op's going BKB as well, so they're just going mass BKBs. Um, Joe's eventually will get a BKB. Doesn't go mass commandus this game for the farming. Well, it was Yasha instead. Tier two's gonna go down, and what I thought was gonna be a quick pushing comp from Alliance is not coming out. It's actually the other way around. I'm really surprised that Malaysia have been able to get this many towers out, opposed to how many of Alliance have gotten. Only one. So yeah, uh, entire map control here from Malaysia. Uh, they do not have the best gankers aside from the Beastmaster, but I guess neither does Alliance aside from the Disruptor, so... I don't really know how these teams are getting so many kills. Like, it, it's strange. It's really small skirmishes, too. Huh. Yeah, the Undying not known for ganking. Looking for team fights, and just there haven't really been any, but they're still e easily pushing towers. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm ready. I'm ready to see the team fights. I'm ready to see the groups. <laughs> Because Glimmer Cape, I'm expecting that one to come out from Kachik Imba, so he can just Glimmer Cape himself and channel fully the Freezing Field. That's a butt ton of damage that can come out there. And they're pinging. They may want to go into Pycat. No, he just blinks away, TP's out, and now we've got the BKB for Mushi and the BKB for Pycat, so they're they're looking ready to fight. And up top, Admiral Bulldog trying to rat it out, just being the rat that he is. The Spirit Lance does fall to the Tsukuchi, but he's still going to just stealth on out of there. So he does pick up the BKB, no eggs, sad fish. <laughs> uh, is he putting more points in stats? No, he hasn't gotten level 14 yet. Should be leveling so, yeah. up his uh, passive, no? Yeah, yeah, the Geminate attack. I, I haven't really seen many Weavers go stats over Geminate. Uh, I've always seen them pick it up. Maybe go stats over Scarab instead of Scarabs. But it does make sense, especially this game, to go stats. As well as his uh, item build. Oh, we got Mushi getting glimpsed back up to the high ground here. Gonna get stuck in the field! Oh, the scream is there! Is there the wave? He's gonna get a little bit of shockage there. No, glimpsed back up for 10 seconds, so he's gonna be A-OK -okay to get out of this. But the rest of the team is kind of rotating on in, so they don't want to get roared. So Alliance will just back off. They still don't have towers to run to, and it seems that like KYXY caught up by Bulldog a bit. Did do a bit of burst with the Lance, and... Admiral Bulldog's gonna chase this one out. Germinate's coming in, minusing his armor, gonna chase him down with the Shikuchi. Pycat's there, looking to get out that Sonic Wave. Can he get the kill? He's gonna look to Doppelganger over the side. Ooh. The scream with the blink does not connect, and KYX by being tri tricky. Yep, really good play, he just targets the Scarab so that they, they don't get the extra vision, as well as the, the effects of the Scarab, even though it's level 1. Still pretty strong. Courier, though. Oh, slam it? Nope. Mushi just not afraid. Has in, has his entire team pushing the top lane with him, trying to look for the pickoff. And with four points in Diabolic Edict, this this tower is going to drop very quickly. There is also no fortify, so seems that Alliance they're going to clear out the last not Alliance oh. Malaysia are going to clear clear out the last tier two while Alliance are going for a sneaky, sneaky sneaky Roche. So they get an Aegis out of this trade at least it seems. Yeah, absolutely no vision here from Malaysia. Should be an easy Roche. But they, they've still maintained all, like almost all their towers, only the mid lane tower going down. 
I mean, this is this is such a terrible situation for the Alliance side. Gold-wise, it's so close. 1,500 gold difference, XP-wise, a little bit of a better story for Alliance. Wow. How, that's interesting. They're, they're being forced in all the time, and they're still keeping an XP lead. That's crazy. Yeah, see, they're, they're split-pushing uh, a lot more effectively than uh, many other teams. That's just what they're known for, and because of that, they're like keeping up unfortunately though their draft is just so squishy they they cannot take fights and because of that malaysia is just like easily taking the towers you know what we'll, we'll, we'll take them for free they will <laughs> they will take anything they can get for free yeah. all right but that was a that was a really good play to go for the roach there it's uh c9-esque just sack a tower you get to go and we'll see malaysia Maybe try to push. I mean, this Aegis should buy a little bit of time for the Alliance side, but there you go. Look at that. Sentry of the low ground, Hawk to scout. God, the Hawk is so good. <laughs> so damn good. Um, so, big items? really quick Necro book from Ohio. He had his first one at like nine minutes, and he has it finished up at 20. Uh, no, he has Blink Dagger 2 at 22 minutes. He is super farmed. I guess with all the towers, but uh, like he just did really well in lane as well. He's second on the net worth, right behind Mushi, and now we got the Ags for uh, fucking Mad and level two ulti. So this is gonna actually help him out a ton. Ice Blast does not connect into Mushi, so no glimpse for Ake to go for a kill. And this is a superb timing for fucking Mad right now with this Ags. They need to need to get like two or three people hit with that Ice Blast to get a kill. I mean to make it worth it. So it's really scary now for Malaysia. They don't really have the best late game. They do have a PO. Uh, as well as Lashrak has been... It's pretty decent late game, but... Uh, looking at Alliance's draft, as well as the Drill War, I feel like they have definitely got the late game. Um, and and honestly, Malaysia just can't push up high ground. Uh, versus the Ice Blast, like, Lashrak's usually pretty, like... He's not really afraid of anything, but if an Ice Blast hits him, man, that's for 17 seconds. He, he really can't just stand on the high ground with his Edict, but here it goes. Well, oh, Alliance aren't in <laughs> position for this. Yeah, Alliance are horrifically out of position, but the Ice Blast gonna hit. It does hit Mushi. We got a glimpse back in. This is the perfect scenario to get this kill. Aurora in the back line as well. Gonna find fucking Matt. He should be dropping with those units. And then Mushi popping the BKB, avoiding some of that damage, and still getting chased down, though, by the Bulldog. Static Storm on top of Kachik Imba. Pycat is gonna chase this one down while Ohio gets Ake. He's on a Double kill, but Admiral Bulldog picking up the kill there on the Lash. Admiral Bulldog able to come back into the fight using his time lapse and getting his health back. It's only going to be a two for two, but a huge, huge kill. What? Oh, hold on. Just kidding. Spirit Lance with the dust. They're going to chase in here onto Bulldog. Do we have a Diffusal Blade? Oh, we do. But he's just Shikuchi's away, gets the DD, and Alliance with a huge kill on the Lash. That actually puts him ahead a little bit. That was still a really close fight. Yeah. So the AA's axe just went into full effect right there. It hit the Lashrak. It hit him at the tier 3 tower. And the Weaver chased him from the tier 3 tower back down to the tier 1 tower if you click on Lush's uh, portrait. <laughs> That's how long the, the AA blast uh, took, st like stayed on him. Jeez. So all over the place. The camera is so hard to control in these fights. But smoke up. Are we ready? Do we have a smoke? Yes, we do. Johnny Ohio. This is the gang ganking trio. Yeah, here comes Mushi. Maybe. I'll get a little bit of ball charge from the from the fountain there, but uh, there we go. Cool. So four man smoke. Ping actually coming out from the alliance side, but KOX was ready to push. He's got the fusel. He's got drums. It's a lot of early game advantage that he can use. Well, it's kind of mid game now that he can fully put it to effect. And Bulldog has double his smoke. DD. Yeah, double smoke coming in. We got a roar out there onto Ake. He's stuck in the position right now. He's going to get blown up. Down for 30. They're going to get the kill on the Pycat too while Loda popping his BKB. Forced to run away from these illusions. And then Admiral Bulldog getting chased down. So he pops his BKB, runs away from the split earth. This base is getting broken right now. There is no fortification. And Bulldog getting chunked away by these spirit lances. He's got his time lapse, but does he want to use it right now? Oh, the Nova almost killing him off. So... These racks, they're gonna fall so quickly. And another Spirit Lance for the kill to pop the Aegis, so he was sitting on that. They get more illusions out for KYXY. The ranged racks are gonna be the first to fall. Looking for the melees. What do we got? Bulldog, Shikuchiing. There's still that ward to spot him out. Decay, axes, everything on top. They're looking for the Ice Blast. This is a big Ice Blast if they can get more than one, but Johnny's gonna be the only one hit there. KYXY avoiding the gust with the doppelganger, chasing down with this Diffusal Blade. Gonna pick up a kill on the Loda, now looking for fucking Mad. Should be able to get this kill. Maybe even GG gets called here. I don't know, there's a buyback forced out there from Loda. The Freezy Field coming in for Kachik Imba. Ohio on the Mega Kill. 
And they're going to just back out there. They got the buyback they wanted. They got a whole plethora of kills. Wow. So, so I want to go back to the Ags on Weaver. Because uh, Pika got roared there on the quad. He got roared, then stunned up by the Lesh, and then he died instantly and didn't have buyback. So, maybe it would have been Ags who was standing behind the, the quad right there and just used it on him. And I feel like that fight would have just changed completely. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Well, we could sit a high, high atop our casting pedestals, <laughs> and uh, we'd love to see it, but it's not going to happen, sadly. He's going for the Lincolns next, and uh, I mean, that was just perfect fight for Malaysia, so. Yeah, so they forced the draw buy back, like killed her, and then forced the buy back. I feel like Alliance really forced it way too hard after getting, he, they got a one-man ice blast, and they still chased really, really hard as if they were going to win the fight, and they ended up training and then dying for a draw and a buyback. So, uh, but uh, they yeah. do keep their axe up, though. Yeah, and I thought, you know, Glimmer Cape was going to come out, and then I realized that Alliance only had much magic damage, so going for the uh, E-Blade, not the E-Blade, but <laughs> just going for the Scepter, and then they kick, pick up a kill out of Ake, Blink Roar, easy peasy, 70 second cooldown, they'll be back up for the next push, and I mean, that's a huge kill, Disruptor Ake was such a good piece of the puzzle for our Alliance to pick up a kill. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no buyback either, needs 100 golden, it's so sad. Um, they can, but Alliance can still fight here if they get a really good Ice Blast, but I don't think Malaysia are going to let that happen. Alright, so the Alliance side still no fortification. They're going to just use these creeps to push on in. Melee racks are going to go down. There's actually only two people hit so far with this BKB coming from Mushi in response. And a little bit of Spirit Lance for comes out for KYXY, but that's going to be a set of racks down in the mid lane. And Malaysia now looking to slowly take it you know this is a lineup that they can go late game with opposed to the alliance side where they needed to push early they couldn't yep. so easiest tracks of their lives uh it was a really early bkb from bushi but <laughs> i guess it doesn't matter um our alliance looking to they're grouping up a little bit i wonder if they're gonna smoke here smoke is in smoke is coming out on the courier or no it dropped in base so not able to do that right now. Desperation smoke? Maybe try to go for a, a roach smoke, but there's this hawk. Oh, this hawk is so perfectly placed. It'll spot the ward, too, so... Alliance can't really sneak around too much. A lot of good vision from this. And... The next roach is actually going to be up in... I didn't get to see the timer when it expired, sadly. So I don't know if it's going to be a long roach, but we'll see when the timer comes in. And they're pinging. Maybe they want to go defend? They're just going to all back out. Interesting. And now the Ags is up for the Beastmaster. Oh, jeez. Yeah, lowers the cooldown. A little Extra bit more range. Effective. So the courier still hasn't picked up the smoke. I want, like, I feel like they need to smoke soon. They need it. They definitely need the next Aegis. So they they're gonna need to like get some word, get, get some good words down. They got one down, but that was spotted out. So it should be deworded fast. I feel like they need another really solid ward down before they can contest a Roche. Oh, this is a pretty short Roche respawn. So 50 oh, seconds wow. on that, and. I mean, there, there's just so many good wards from the Malaysia side. One in the base, one in the lane, and just all the control they need. Even with, you know, Admiral Bulldog still on the top of the net worth, he's got his Lincolns. He doesn't do as much damage as he would like to. He, he wants the Desolator, like, if he can get that out, that'd be pretty sick. But he hasn't found the room for the farm still. Yeah, it's, it's always a really sad day when you're a Weaver and you're forced to go both BKB and Lincolns. You really want to go a uh, survivability item, either BKB or Lincolns, and then you want to go a damage item and then go back, like, if you need another uh, survivability item. But this game, he's forced to go both BKB and Lincolns, so he's not going to be outputting that much damage. Most of the damage is going to be coming from the Ice Blast, but... Hmm. So, Tier 2 going to get pressured a little bit. We got support of TP coming in from KYXY. And uh, Roche up right now, so one of these teams is going to look for it. Do we see a Hawk scout from Ohio? Maybe they'll just run straight into it and face check and then call KY X way over and make mincemeat of it. Alright, they know. They kill the ward first. They were spotted out going into the pit. The question is, do Malaysia play that mind game where they keep Alliance guessing if they're going to get Roche? Oh, they have Ice Plus anyway, but... This off the mark. So Roche now. There's the boar kiting a little bit. God, the boar is just, like, the perfect summon unit. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> they also have a Shiva's up on somebody, Villa Shrak. Yeah, Mushi. Yeah. And he's dropping something, so he's gonna get this Aegis, it seems. Gonna pop up the ulti, too. I, I mean, did they just smoke from the Alliance side? They did, but this Roche is dying way too fast! So Aegis over to Mushi, smoke not gonna be affected, they immediately back off. <laughs> just kidding, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is looking like Malaysia's game right now. 
And like you said, they don't have any stuns from the Alliance side. They have silences, slows, and uh, the potential for cold feet procs, but that that's it. And the glimpse can bring them back, but at this point, unless that person is dangerously low, I don't I don't see them winning the fight. And Mushi Invis gets a split earth, gonna pop his Lincolns, and uh oh, glimpse. Mm, nope. Drops the ward. He, he wants to. Go. Wait, who did he just he glimpse? glimpse? Whoa. Glimpse and dying, I think. Back to base. No, I don't know where he glimpsed and dying, but <laughs> Aki's getting chased down. He drops the field, gonna get slowed up a bit. Spirit Land still connects, and do they have the skill? They do. Johnny, way too fast. Drums coming in. He drops the Static Storm for some try to create a way to get out of there. So, again, Aki getting dropped out before any kind of team fight happens. Yeah, that was just a that was just a simple feed. Like he really had no reason no no reason to be there at all. Radiance top tower. Is he had an attacker picked up on Drew. Oh, so. Looking for a little bit of maneuverability, I guess. Still no Mask of Madness or anything like that, no Helm of the Dom. Uh, he can't even loot the base, really, so there's no point in having that creep to stack up the Ancients, and Tier 3 in the bot lane, gonna be pressured. Bulldog TPing back, getting some pressure out with the Edict, and I mean, that's just gonna melt the tower. Mushi can just stay up the front, and Mushi didn't go for the typical Bloodstone kind of build. He went BKB Shivas, and he's still looking pretty good. They end up using a uh, Soul Rip to heal him oh up with Ice Blast. Oh, what? I see it. Yeah. They have the gym. They the gym, so they saw it on the mini-map. Yep, so fucking mad, almost dying to killing off that uh, Necro unit, but now... We got a Blink Roar. Emerald Bulldog gonna get chased in. The Gust is out there for Mushi, but the Freezing Field coming in from Kachik. Imba doing a lot. The Sonic Wave as well. Pycap blinking forward. Glimmer Cape actually onto Mushi as he charges around Invis. He realizes he's out of mana, so he can't keep going. And now they're looking for Bulldog. Those illusions coming in, doing a lot of work for KYXY, but it's still a buyback, I believe, was forced out. And now Loda getting slowed down. Shiva's, he's Frostbitten. He's gonna go down. KYXY chasing out a fucking mad. Should be able to get this kill. They do. And Mushi, respawning after the Aegis, gonna be able to come back with full health, full mana, and take the second set of racks. Oh, dire straight here for Alliance. No buyback on Loda as he used it earlier. Yeah, so, Loda no buyback, Admiral Bulldog no buyback, yeah. Looking like Game 3 is gonna go to the Malaysia side. Oh, there's a Roar! Oh, and there's a Frostbite too, they actually just popped his Lakins with that, and they just immediately melt him down. Mushi popping the BKB, he's looking to come back into this fight. Bulldog! Gonna use the Shikuchi, try to get out of here, he just can't do it! Actually, he can do it, excuse me, but the base is still taking sus like substantial damage. Or a lot of damage, I don't know, that's not the word. <laughs> yeah, the base is just in shambles right now, like... Only one more lane of Rax. He just is down, so maybe... Malaysia really haven't been favoring getting the third set of Rax before the Aegis. But... I don't know, this, this seems like just a, a simple road to victory for Malaysia, but I don't know, Alliance might be, it might try something different. Uh, it's really up to this AA Ice Plus though, every every single fight it's been off the mark because uh, Malaysia have a gym, and because of the gym it shows on the mini-map where the AA Blast is coming in, and they've just been able to dodge it every time. Uh, so, I mean, Alliance out of the tournament? <laughs> it, it's looking like that, I mean I'm not calling it yet, they can still get some... Miracle fight with a five man AA blast hit, but it's seeming near impossible. The ping's coming out too. They're just their ward game too from Malaysia has been on point. Mm -hmm. There's not much you can do against it, and I mean item wise, like a lot, like Alliance are just so far behind. Admiral Bulldog was trying to keep up, but he eventually fell behind too. So level sixteen Quapo, I mean. They're, they're actually not waiting for the Aegis here. They're afraid of going even later game versus Alliance. And rightfully so, but I don't know if they want to wait. Like, if they, why they wouldn't want to wait for the Aegis. Top tower is under attack. Mm. I, feel, I feel like that's a lot safer route, especially for a hero like Lishrak. Maybe they're just not patient. <laughs> oh, they, they actually don't have any stuns on Alliance. What am I saying? He can always... Oh. Whoa, what happened here? We got a roar into Loda. The Ice Blast is going to connect onto Mushi, but he's going to BKB through it. Freezing Field coming in, laying in a ton of damage. And they finally actually don't end up stopping it. Kachik just gets a full one off, but what is happening? This fight's all over the place. Bulldog going to get taken out, it seems. Pycat blinking out. It's going to be a 3 for 4. Looking for making a 3 for 5 as Pycat runs away. The buyback comes in from Mushi. He's going to box himself back into the base. And now, looking for Pycat. Going to get slowed up a little bit with the Diffusal Blade. He's out of mana now, and he's going to drop. That's going to be game 3. Over to the Malaysia side. GG's called. I didn't expect this to happen. I, I thought it'd be much closer, but Malaysia's map control, immaculate. Road control, fine. Ohio's Beastmaster, just boars and hawks, man, all day. Yeah, this all this all comes down to the draft. They picked up a Weaver who 
while he was pretty good, a Weaver and a Dura, while they were pretty good, uh, they really didn't get enough done to in the split pushing department. So Mushi, Mushi and Malaysia just weren't afraid to push towers, and it was just as simple as that. Like the uh, Alliance just couldn't fight with their draft. Yep. So that does it here for our set of the cast. Uh, I believe. Blaze and Lysander are going to be next. Zyklops is going to be on BC BTS 2. And uh, I wasn't sure of the schedule today. Sorry, I couldn't check it. But there's plenty more Dota to come. I believe Newbie's playing next with the... Uh, oh, man. I can't remember the team, but... Yeah, check it out. Stay tuned. The stream is going to go offline for a hot second while uh, the other two get set up. And I'm Egad or at EgadCast on Twitter. You can follow also my co-caster at WFX. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, hit us up with the critiques or just the follows if you'd like. And follow BATS on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. And also think about picking up the I League Season 3 ticket. Get a nice little Medusa set. So, see you guys in chat. And also, enjoy spectating the games. Thanks for joining me, Ryan. Anytime. Peace.